Hi guys, welcome to Italyland, and today I'm going to showcase you one of the projects that I have been working on and off for half a year, and I finally finalized it. So what I'm doing is I turn my mini PC into a Bazite or Steam OS machine and then i use it for streaming and yes i am using my ionel pocket air so this is an an popular choice maybe but there is a good thing for that because it supports sim card so i can actually take it out with me streaming my pc games just like using a steam deck but in this like a lot smaller form factor I'm planning to do a tutorial on how to set up a dual boot Windows in Bazite for a mini PC and turn it to a streaming machine. So if you are interested, please stay tuned and I'll make it as soon as possible. You may wonder why do I need to do all this when I can just simply stream Windows to phone or whatever using Steam Link or whatever. That's because when we stream from Windows, if we are playing with emulators, there are key mapping issues that would happen and it can only be fixed by buying a third party app or by using our stream overlay. And by default in SteamOS, we will be able to enable the stream overlay and that actually overrides the problem on key mapping especially when we have to close all those emulators for example if you are playing 3ds or yuzu you can't really use your controller as a shortcut to close that so if you want to quit the game it is actually quite difficult to do so or nearly impossible because i have already tried that but with steam overlay that is automatically on by default in steam os it just overrides it and you do not experience any kind of problem in terms of closing all these emulators and what that means is that you do not need a strong Android device in order to play higher-end systems including Switch emulation, Wii U emulation, PS3 emulation and so on because you can already stream it from your PC. And there is another good thing about using Linux that you do not experience any auto-update in Windows. You know, Windows just updates your device, it turns off automatically. Even if you somehow kind of turn off the auto update, it happens. I mean, of course, there are means that you can turn that feature off as well. But, you know, there are so many hiccups with Windows, and therefore, it is more ideal and more simple to use Bazide as the Operation OS. Coming back to the issues that is related to emulations or even some games that have a separate launcher, often Windows would detect a wrong Windows, leading the result to be a black screen on the other side when you do the um, remote play. So if you are outside of your home there is no way to fix it and that's a big problem however if you are using bazite there will be no wrong detection for the windows and therefore very likely you will not experience any kind of black screen unless there is something wrong with your game that is not loading on the original side so that's a separate issue on the other hand you may see other people saying that oh Apollo and Moonlight or so on are working so well. Unfortunately, these things are not usable on Linux. Not at the time when I am filming this video. However, those kind of streaming services are actually not possible to do remote play it over the other network like on your mobile data and 
there may be ways if you do port forwarding and use some kind of VPN, but those kind of things may not always work, especially uh, if you are in countries that have more restrictions in port forwarding. Here in Japan, most of the modems that are available or access point has some limitations in port forwarding and that leads us to not really able to do port forwarding properly. I have tried multiple times for port forwarding in PS5 and so on, but it just doesn't work. So I think streaming from Bazaar SteamOS would be the best option if you want a simple setup for remote play outside of your home. And with SteamOS, it just makes everything so easy to see and navigate. Therefore, it just really feels like that you are using a Steam Deck, but you're not. So I really like this setup, but everything has its downside. So there's this setup or I mean SteamOS and Steam Link itself. Sometimes Steam Link has some kind of error that blocks connection from other network. And it actually happened to me when I was filming this video. However, Valve has their monitor on their app very well. So they released another update to fix the issue in just the one to two days. So that actually is a very well monitored surface. And for the other downside is that you have to turn on your PC all the time. However, it just going to be the same for any kind of streaming for a ps5 or a pc whatever if you have to do remote play that's what you have to deal with and there are some gacha games that do not work on bazite unfortunately so that's not exactly one thing that you have to concern if you do not play any kind of gacha game but there's just one downside that i can think of and uh, for example, Infinity Naked didn't work anyways. The other downside would be it takes time to learn and set up, including how to install games out of Steam, like non-Steam games, like Emu Deck and so on. But if you have experience with Steam Deck already, that shouldn't be a problem. The last downside that I can think of is that this setup does not automatically fit phone screen. Apollo, on the other hand, would automatically fit your phone screen. However, it is not available on Steam OS, so that's not an option while we are talking about Bazai. And uh, Apollo doesn't support streaming over the internet as well, so if you want to take it outside with you, that's also not an option, unfortunately. So bear in mind, if you are using the same kind of setup, but you are streaming to a phone using a controller or so on, you will experience two black bars on the side of your phone, depending on how big your phone is. Uh, to me, I really don't like black bars and therefore I really prefer streaming it to my Iron Nail Pocket Air. If you don't like Iron Nail Pocket Air, you have another option, Odin Light, the first generation, that they also support LTE, support SIM cards. So um, if you happen to see I either one of them on a secondhand market and if you love streaming, from your PC, then probably they, they are the devices, the go-to devices that you would like to look into. And yet there are still some drawbacks of using iNail Pocket Air. I actually bought a new SIM card just for my iNail Pocket Air. This Pobo SIM card here uses AU um, if you know, you know, in Japan, but then, um, you know, uh, I can plug it in. It shows me the uh, connection to its network. However, it just doesn't work. Since there is no setting for APN, there is no way that you could set up an APN so that 
it may facilitate the connection for internet but no you see um, it is showing me 4G but there is no that up and down an arrow showing that there is data coming by default the data roaming was turned on so I turned it off but still there is no internet on the other hand I did try my daily sim card I use Lactan you know if you know you know um, there's another brand in Japan uh, now I'm not connecting it to Wi-Fi and I'm only connected to my data so yes um, I can connect it to Bazite and um, the other drawback is that sometimes when the weather is bad it the connection is not very fast so um, there's a just typical thing that would happen in my area in particular so I guess that's how data connection works as well so um, it still connects but then somehow you see there will be some yellow or red sign showing you that there is a bad connection so it still work but it is not the ideal situation but if you want to play PC game outside of your home I still think this is going to be the best option in terms of remote play I am really looking forward to my Iron Nail Pocket DS and AYM Thor to test out the latest Game Hub 5 5.0 because I think probably most of my JRPGs are going to work there and that means I don't need to actually connect to the internet because I can play natively on it and they now also allow the cloud sync for safe data so that will be also of one of the reason that I don't need to go online but for the time being I am happy to be with my settings here and I will use it for quite a while I believe I mean at least this way I do not need to go back and forth between my switch like and my steam deck anymore so I'm gonna stick with this setup for a while and uh, maybe I will switch back to my Steam Deck somehow if I want to go offline but that would be a very easy thing to do because most of the things are already on Steam Cloud Save so I just have to you know make sure my backup is there and if I'm using an emulator I just have to send the save data back from my PC to my Steam Deck so that's also really easy. Lastly I know this is a little bit crazy but there's one thing that I haven't figured out is how to end the PS5 remote play. So as you may know using the official PS Play Remote, no, I mean PS Remote Play app would not allow you to use external controller. So you have to use a DualShock. And if you don't want to use it, you have to use Chiaki or PS Play Remote. But then those needed you to do port forward in order to have remote play, which is not available in my situation. So I was thinking wait I can do like streaming from Chiaki to my Bezai and then I can stream it from my Bezai so there will be more latency but if you're playing just you know RPGs that is not that does not matter that much so I tried it and it kind of worked the, the thing is that I cannot have a button that is mapped to home uh, based on my keys here on my INL Pocket Air. So I tried to remap the home button, but I couldn't and ended up not able to, you know, turn off my PS5 after streaming it. So theoretically, it is working, but it is also not working in a sense. So I hope I can figure that out later, but that's the current findings that I have. 
And that's make it pretty much about this showcase video. I hope you like it and if you want to have a tutorial for Bazai Dual Boot on a mini PC, please be patient and I'll update. Thank you and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!